Wanted to bring you the latest update in Syria as Russia has launched cruise missiles from four warships in the Caspian Sea. They're targeting ISIS strongholds, at least that's what they're claiming, Jose. Now they've launched strikes, 26 of them on 11 ISIS targets. This is Syrian ground troops. They begin major offensive a major offensive supported, of course, by Putin's bombers. Now, I want to point out that the Russian defense minister, he's saying that no civilian areas are being hit. This comes as Assad's troops are pushing into two provinces backed by Russian jet strikes as well. And uh, we're seeing full force, full force escalation uh, with Russia backing Assad, not only whipping ISIS targets, 11 of them they claim to have hit, but also the collateral aspect of hitting U.S.-backed rebels and civilians that um, don't have a dog in this fight, per se. Yeah, like you, you said, like I think it's an impossibility to not have collateral damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the heart of it is the push that Putin is doing to give Assad the power that he needs to regain control in the area and make a loud political statement that they are supporting the official regime and they will continue to do so. They claim domestically and officially that they have destroyed 40% of ISIS infrastructure, more like 40% of the infrastructure left because it's been proven that they have also targeted the areas where the rebels, the Western-backed rebels are thriving, meaning the Homs province where we saw the first strike and that we've seen several reports of, ca of casualties in the civilian population, civilian activists coming out and saying they are hitting civilian outposts, you know, unlike they are claiming. Homs was definitely the hardest hit Russian defense minister, insisting their, their missiles didn't hit any civilian areas. And I want to point out that there's this picture that's been circulating on international media, particularly the Daily Mail, this three-year-old boy. His name is Fadi. He has a, he has a piece of shrapnel you know, embedded in his skull. Luckily, he survives this ordeal, but that really goes against what this defense minister is saying. He's insisting no civilian areas, no, you know, no, no, nothing being hit. That's just a statistical impossibility with these airstrikes. And uh, this little boy survived, but he really highlights this conflict well in that you cannot have non-civilians hit in airstrikes and bombing like this, particularly in homes. Exactly. And also, it brings a question of, how media around the world is framing the conflict. We see these pictures coming up of this kid and because they're framed and made, you know, making Russia responsible of it. But we have to remind that it's not only the Russian strikes that are creating this type of tragedies, are also the western back drone strikes not too long ago. We hit uh, Doctors Without Borders Hospital and we by didn't mistake. See, right. You know, so we didn't we, see any of those images of those burning exactly. bodies on fire in that hospital. And what, what type of, what would that do to the U.S. narrative and our own foreign policy had those images surfaced? And I hate that aspect of the, of the media sanitation that happens with particularly images. It's a very, it's a crafting of a very important narrative because it, you know, nothing says something like an image does. Exactly. I think we didn't see it either in the Oregon Umqua shooting. We didn't see any, you know, where are those images? Yes, we have this one from this little boy. It's been released in international media. Um, I think because it's the first layer of propaganda. The, the, the filter that mainstream media in each country uh, becomes for the population to understand a, sim, you know, a, a, a simple optic of the problem is very real. We have these media companies deciding who are we going to blame? This narrative, who is the bad guy? The bad guy is, is, is the guy who is dropping bombs and making these kids have sharp nails in their faces. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy to erase the fact that also the other side of the story, the Western supported rebels also killed civilians and anyone involved as a player in an armed conflict is guilty of collateral damage. And we have to remember that and not only fall for the idea that it's only the Russian strikes that are creating these images, are creating these stories of, of horrific events, it's anyone involved in these armed conflicts, ISIS, the Western Coalition, and Russia. We'd love to know what you think at home about the four warships in the Caspian Sea helping out Assad's regime, the Russians, taking, taking center stage here, 26 strikes. They're claiming that they've hit 11 ISIS targets. Let us know what you think about this story. While you're at it, be sure to check out the rest of our channel, and of course, subscribe to the Lip TV for more.